What is up guys, welcome to another video. So this is week seven of the competition prep. So, you know, I'm just gonna be winging it. Buddy, you gonna be doing that here? Sorry about that, Samson was thirsty. So yeah, I have no idea what I wanna be um, preparing for you guys for this week's vlog. I know for a fact I will be training with one of my mates, Darren. D-Money, D-Money Rush. So me and Darren, we go way back since Fitness First Days when we were doing PTing. It'll be good to train with him, I think. What's on the cards is we're gonna be training some titties. No chest, no sex, no chest, no sex. Some chesticles, the armor plate that everyone wants, especially if you're a man. Guilty, here I am. All right, so I've also got to go visit my naturopath. So in the previous vlog, I did mention that I was taking a few supplements just to get rid of a, a gut virus that I contracted from, you know, from my dog. I know, quite embarrassing. So I'm taking colostrum, glutamine, and specific types of probiotic. Saccharomyces boulardii is another one, just to rebuild the gut and to be healthier. So I'm still on prep. I just want to know how long I have to be on the protocol, which I'm going to go visit him earlier today. And then later that day, I'm going to go train with, with Darren. So let's get straight into it, guys. All right, just walk into the naturopath, see what the haps is, what I gotta do, and then, uh, yeah, get back to full health. Well, I'm very healthy, but you know what I mean? Just functioning normally and, yeah, feeling charged. All right, so I just got back from the naturopath. Gave me the full diagnosis, so that's the bill. <laughs> that's the bill. So yeah, what I'm taking right now, just to rebuild my gut, I've got some ultra flora intensive care. So this is just a couple of strains of probiotic, um, lactobacillus rhamnosus, saccharomyces boulardii. So this is just gonna help, you know, really build up my microbiome. It's just gonna help populate the good bacteria versus the bad bacteria. And the next thing I've got is glutamine. So this one's called Glutagenics, this brand. Uh, these are all practitioner brands. I think you can just use glutamine by itself if you just want to help maintain integrity of your gut. But this one is, I guess, a gut health blend where I've got, looking at the ingredients, I've got aloe vera, which is going to help soothe the gut. I've got Beswalia extract, which is just going to help reduce inflammation. Vitamin D3, it's got vitamin A, zinc. Uh, zinc is good for gut health as well. And the vitamin A as well, it's the bioavailable form uh, derived from animal retinol. That's the whole spiel, guys. I'm going to be doing this for another two to three more months and just gauge it on a symptom level. Right now, I feel freaking fantastic. Before I saw the naturopath, I was feeling like shit. Um, and again, these are the symptoms that I highly encourage you guys to look into in your own health journey that if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling like your shit is runny, I know guys, I went there, I'm so sorry. But if you feel like your shit is runny, um, that you can't hold food down, that you feel itchy, like itchy skin, like, you know, dandruff, athlete's foot, jock itch, vaginal rash. Sorry guys, I went there again. <laughs> your farts stink more than ever. Your shit stinks more than ever. Check yourself out because some of those symptoms I was dealing with and it was just uncomfortable. And I knew that I wasn't functioning optimally and I had to just really get the full diagnosis and how I did that was through a stool test. I sent out a poo sample. So that's what I did. Got the, uh, the full analysis and yeah, we're just rebuilding from there. Don't leave it till too late. I would say gauge it if you're dealing with that constantly for a month. But that's just my full breakdown of what I would do if I was in the same situation again. If it's happening for more than 30 days, go see a doctor, a physician, a naturopath. The rare occasion where it's just two two days in the week and then you're back on to your normal way of living and functioning, then you're sweet. You're all gravy, baby. So yeah. Name, occupation, shoe fight. <laughs> Put me on a spot. <laughs> hey, come back. You serious? Yeah, I'm serious, bro. Fuck it, hurry up. All right, Darren, occupation, coach, shoe size, massive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first off, we're just warming up. You know, working out the rear delts, really opening up that, that posture. So really opening up that posture in terms of just getting the chest muscles, getting those chest muscles. So in that way, we're primed. Warmed up and ready to go. So, a lot of different variations. I'm internally rotating, stepping back until I alleviate some tension over here. Pulling it towards my face, I'm really externally rotating. 
retaining control of my thumbs back. Push the Nice control and flexing now for a second or two before retracting the way back. The next exercise we're doing is shoulder internal rotation. So make sure our elbows are pinned in our body and we're just moving our forearms away from our body. Nice control motion. It's really important as this is what's going to help get you the extra range when it comes to getting out of the bottom of the bench press. So really taking control, elbow pinned. Nice and slow. Go like 12 to 15 minutes from this one. We're really holding that for a few seconds. And then nice and slow all the way back. Alright, so first up we're hitting a Smith Machine incline bench press. So I guess the benefits behind this over a traditional barbell is number one, you've got stability, so more basic support. Stability is the best friend in terms of hypertrophy because you're not working um, other, I guess, stabilizing muscles and you, I guess, run the reward of not fatiguing as much on a Smith machine, getting a great stimulus and not as fatiguing as much as if you were to work on a dumbbell or a barbell type of movement. So again, right now, being in competition prep, it's all a matter about trying to preserve as much muscle mass as you can. And the number one focus for that is, of course, eating protein and really train towards that strength repetition range of anywhere between, let's say, five to eight repetitions. And that's what I'm gonna be working and aiming towards in the last working set. So, yeah. I've ever pushed that weight. Nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. Serious? Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go that heavy on a Smith, but I would never do a Smith first. So it's good. It's good to, it's good to train with you. Oh. <laughs>
outside the supermarket. Got my GoPro ready. Kapow! Next level content creation mode. I'm going to go through, I'm going to say three shops. The butcher, the fruit and veg, and then just your regular supermarket just to get all the necessities and the goodies. And I'll just run through the budget of how much I spent in each of those individual shops and tally out the total cost of how much it would cost to feed me for the entire week. So let's get it. grocery haul so I stopped through a number of different shops just because I prefer buying my meats from a butcher or a fishmonger I think it's called the fishmonger the veggies from the fruit and vegetable market and then anything else packaged manufactured will be in a giant supermarket store where you can get your groceries your meats and your frozen vegetables so let's get straight into it first up I went to Woolies I got five kilos of jasmine rice now that is gonna last me for at least three weeks Right, I'm not gonna eat five kilos of rice. That's probably not even in my bulk phase. I'll be doing that. So that'll last me three weeks. I've got organic oats, two dollars seventy-five a packet. So that's five hundred grams. One kilo for five dollars fifty. So if I'm eating one hundred grams a day, that'll last me ten days. So I'm having breakfast for as little as two dollars, and I'm getting good source of nutrients: my protein, carbs, and good fats in terms of having the oats. Bought four cans of chopped tomatoes, which I'm gonna add towards my turkey mince. All up, that cost me $34.70, so pretty good. Moving on into the meat section. So I bought 1.6 kilos of diced chicken mince, and then I bought four chicken kebab skewers, which is around 200, 250 grams of chicken. So that cost me a total of $37.57 for 1.8 kilos of free range chicken. So I think that's pretty good, especially if it's free range, sourced locally, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Moving on, vegetables. So the vegetables was, I think, every vegan and vegetarian's paradise in terms of the shopping haul that I've created. So I bought 1.1 kilos of butternut pumpkin, brown onions, two asparaguses, asparaguses, I don't know if that's a word, baby broccoli times two, spring onions, Swiss mushrooms, 300 grams of that, three bell peppers or red capsicums, red chilies, 4.2 kilos of sweet potatoes. Now that's gonna last me two weeks. I'm not gonna have 4.2 kilos of sweet potatoes. If I did, I'll be in the bulk mode and even then I'll probably be bloated and would not wanna move. That is gonna last me two weeks. 600 grams of green beans, one packet of eggs, carrots, and then loose garlic. All up, that was totaled at $43.81. And then the last stop, second last stop, is Aldi, so I bought my turkey mince from there. Sometimes Woolies or Coles would have it, I just couldn't find um, good lean turkey mince, so I went to Aldi instead. So I bought 1.5 kilos of turkey mince, which costed me $17.37. I bought more asparagus, don't ask me why, I thought I didn't add that into the vegetable pile, but it looks like I did. 1.5 kilos of berries, so one kilo of strawberries, and then 500 grams of blueberries, all up, $39. Now, since I doubled up on asparagus, I could minus $7 from that, so that'd be $32. But let's just carry on and just keep adding the total. And then I did a little bit of a splurge. I went into the fishmonger. I got 500 grams of barramundi, and then I got myself some oysters. So, so all up, that cost me $40. Now, I could have budgeted on the fish a bit better. If I were to buy it frozen, I would probably get double the value in terms of quantity as opposed to getting it fresh. Now, sometimes I lean towards fresh just because personal preference. If I'm on a budget, then I won't shy away in buying barramundi, especially that having it kept frozen, it's a good alternative of if you feel like you've got nothing to eat, then all you gotta do is just open up the, the freezer and you've already got fish ready to be made and uh, yeah, not having to worry about the expiry date for another three to six months. So frozen isn't a bad option. It's sometimes I lean towards getting it more fresher than getting it frozen. So all up, the total was $184 for the entire week. I could have budgeted a bit better. 3.1 kilos of meat. So mixing it up with fish, turkey and chicken. So if I were to divide that by breakfast, lunch and dinner, so three meals times seven days in the week, 21 meals, that will be a total of $8.80 
per meal. That's cheaper than if I were to go out and buy meals at a cafe or at a restaurant where you're looking at an average of $15 per meal. So the bottom line is people find eating healthy to be expensive when what they're really doing is they're trying to balance a lifestyle of comfort food and then they try to add on to the healthy lifestyle. You have to pick one and you have to know which days or what you're eating in accordance to support your goals. If it's fat loss, if it's muscle building. Now, I know for a fact I haven't catered in my supplementation. That's another expense. But if I'm looking at the basics of what I'll be stacking with, such as the magnesium, boron, the taurine, the vitamin C, the spirulina, protein powder, all last for a period of at least two to three months. So it's not like I'm buying it every week, it's maintaining for a period of two to three months, then I'll replenish, then I'll restock. And it won't be me restocking the whole supplement case, it'll just be me restocking one or two per month. Again, I could have got this down a lot cheaper than I actually did, but you know, I'm happy with that, $8.80 per meal. Extra to this, I could add even a snack in between if I were to, let's say, bake a cake, bake a brownie, bake some so that, didn't you? you could bake a oat cookies or those rice krispies that i've put up on my instagram feed and tiktok feed yeah guys what i'm cooking for this week is going to be turkey chili mix and then a peri peri chicken using diced chicken preferably i would have chose chicken thighs for that recipe but since i'm on comp prep every bit of calorie counts so chicken thighs have a little bit more fat than chicken breast so i'm just gonna have to make do with using diced chicken breast so that is the weekly grocery haul done thanks for watching that is a wrap. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. In next week's vlog, I'll show you how I prepare my meals, how I eat a 2,850 calorie meal plan and what that looks like. I'll also show you and share with you guys my secret tips in how I managed to lose 10 kilos by simply using one meal plan. What the? So stay tuned for next week. See ya.